21 out of 26 analysts believe that the Nvidia stock is a buy right now. And with some pretty strong institutional holding, it is hard to argue against this. The real question though is what do the numbers tell us? Looking at a high level overview of the stock, we can see that the enterprise value is currently sitting at 697 billion and the market cap is sitting at 690 billion. Now, if we look at that insider holding, it is pretty strong at 4.06% and the institutional holding, like I mentioned, really strong at 66.14%. A very small short interest out against the stock, 1.02%. There is also a very small dividend yield of 0.06%. And looking at the net free cash flows after dividend, 7.7 .7 billion in free cash flows left. Now let's quickly talk about some of the financial risks and highlights that you need to be aware of. First of all, you need to know that there has been some pretty significant insider selling over the last three months. And also in terms of the earnings, those grew by 125% over the last year and it is forecast that it will continue growing by about 17.12% over the next year. The other thing to be aware of is that the NVIDIA management team is relatively seasoned and experienced with an average tenure of 13.2 years. Now let's go through our four step stock screening process. Looking at the fundamentals, the first thing we wanna make sure is that the P ratio is between one and 25. They're coming in at 71.93, so they're failing on the first check. Look at the net margin, we want this to be greater than 10. They're coming in at 36.23, so that's a check mark there. The net equity is also positive at 26.6 billion, so that's another check mark. And in terms of the dividend cost being less than free cash flow, that's a check mark there. Unfortunately though, there has been some shareholder dilution over the last three years. In fact, 45 million additional shares have been made available. In our second screener, we are looking at the management of debt and specifically debt to equity. We want this to be below 40%. They're coming in just above at 43%, so unfortunately failing on that check. However, the current ratio, which is uh, greater than one sitting at 6.65 is really good. So that's a check mark there. And then in terms of that free cash flow versus uh, debt, we wanted to pay down at least 10% of the debt. They're currently paying down a very healthy 39% of their debt. Now in terms of our third screener, which is momentum, we are looking for year on year growth across top line, middle line and bottom line revenue. Now we can see top line revenue in terms of total revenue and gross profit has been a little bit inconsistent. Pretty much the same with operating income and net income. However, if we look at the operating cash flow and free cash flow, we've had consistent year on year growth for the last three years. So looking at our momentum screener checklist, they are falling short on the top line and middle line revenue. However, operating cash flow and free cash flow, which is our absolute bottom line revenue numbers, there they've shown consistent year on year growth. So they're getting two check marks over there. And this brings us to our fourth screener, which is looking at historical growth. Now we're looking for return on equity to have a return greater than 10%. They're coming in at 44.83%, so very healthy. Return on assets should also be greater than 10%. They're coming in at 17.2%. So once again, very good returns there. And the return on investor capital sitting at 32%, way above our benchmark of 10%. So again, another check mark. And looking at the compound annual growth rate of the earnings per share, we want this to be greater than 10. They're coming in at 22.75%. So looking at our screening summary, we can see that 60% of the checks are met on the fundamentals. In terms of debt management, 66% of our checks met. And in terms of momentum, only 33%. This does, however, not entirely mean that this is a bad thing. It could actually mean that there is room for growth. And then of course, looking at the historical growth factor, 100% of the criteria being met. So now let's have a look at some intrinsic valuation models and see exactly what the stock is worth. On our first valuation model, Model, looking at the price to free cash flow, we can see they are trading on a very high multiple of 84. If we were to value the business out, it would be between 20 and 30. And this brings us to an intrinsic valuation against the free cash flow of $79.88. Looking at our second valuation model, which is using the earnings per share on a discounted cash flow model. If we discount in at 10%, looking at growth rates between five and 15% on a fair target P of 25, we're coming out with an intrinsic valuation of $122.26. Now looking at the different price models, you see that the current model Market pricing is $276. The analyst consensus over the next 12 months is $350. Look at the free cash flow valuation, we're coming out at 79. On the earnings per share, we're coming out at $122. And on the enterprise value, we're coming out at $273. So with such a big price disparity between the different models, what do I personally think the stock is worth over the next 12 months? 
Looking at the next 12 months, I believe that the stock is worth about $280. This is a very small margin, and if I was looking to buy into the stock today, it would have to be below $238. I do, however, think that the stock does offer fair value over the much longer term. However, if you are looking to buy into the stock, I think it would be wise to put it on your watch list and wait for a better price. Now, if you do have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section down below. And if you are interested in 14 stocks that we think are potentially undervalued, check out this video next.